Let me show you the after hours F-150 out here. We're anxious to get to oh, the desert I'm, right I'm now. I'm sure, like, man. Let's go. Hey guys, we're back here at Metal Monkey Shop. Before we hop into the uh, F-150 over there, I thought it was important for Jeff to share some of the tools he uses, because I know you guys are always asking, so. Every tool in the shop has a story to tell, right? Heck yeah. Uh, you know, we could start over here. Obviously, okay. I am proficient with TIG welding. There's a story that goes with this TIG welder. One of my buddies, I used to have a Lincoln electric machine that overheated on me all the time, constantly. I am a big fan of Miller. I happen to be a Miller guy. So I put up on the internet that I was looking to trade for uh, that machine straight across. It was, it was a pretty nice machine. One of my buddies traded me this old Sinker Wave 250 right here. And this thing is a beast. I love it. And I used to have the matching Miller MIG welder right here. Okay. Uh, but recently, Longevity reached out to me since I am a welding guy. All and, right. And uh, these guys sponsored the shop, so I'm using a Longevity uh, MIG welder right now. This thing works awesome. It's a 200 amp machine. Uh, it has like a 60% duty cycle, which is unusual in such a small cabinet. Obviously, uh, Welder Convenient. Supply right here, they're my sponsor. Uh, okay. So they take care of all of my welding and gas needs, all that stuff. Heck yeah. One of my other sponsors, Blue Demon Welding. So they send me products to test out and prototype. This is the fab rack they got right here. It's pretty cool. Always need a nice table. Right. Three quarter inch top. This thing weighs like 800 pounds. It's Insane. Ridiculously stupid. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, knife makers and all that stuff in our industry have been using belt sanders like this for years and years and years. But the cool thing is about Ameribraid is these are local boys to us in Southern California. Right on. They actually got their start with ODR Roy. You got to love that they brought something to market that blows away their competition. That's Not only awesome. price point, but the actual performance of this machine. Yeah. These things are awesome. Run back. Right? Yeah, a lot of guys have these in their shops, right? Yeah, right now, they, they're blowing up. Everybody in the off-road industry here in Southern California is ordering these machines. You can't even hardly get them from these guys right now. But I mean, this is the official mess maker in any shop right here, because this thing just sits there and makes just a mess. Just boom, everywhere. <laughs> right on, everywhere. right on, right on, right on. You know, a disc grinder like this is, is paramount in a shop. So if you can't afford the belt sander, I, I highly recommend a disc grinder like this. Okay. This was an acquisition I made from a previous employer. Yeah. I paid like $150 for this thing. No way. Yeah, they yeah. were going to junk it. So I'm like, I'll take it. Of course, it needs a switch, all that stuff, but it is a beast. But the cool thing is, all the years ago, check this out right here. Just like Danny Giannini, I used to use all the paper patterns. Everything was made from paper. But nowadays, I recently purchased this small like CNC plasma table right here. Um, oh yeah, that's you know, cool. And these things just get down to boogie. It's a little bit dirty, I'm sorry, because I actually use it all the time, right? Hey dude, that's what it is, <laughs> like, like yeah. an off-road truck. And uh, all it takes <laughs> is to draw something up on a uh, program real quick, and I can cut out four of them instead of one at a time. That's, that's the awesome. benefit of this stuff. Off-road magazine is like my family right here. Yes sir. So like my other MIG welder and then this plasma cutter all came from them. Those are sponsorship packages. This thing is a monster just the same. Of course, the swag off-road brake, everybody loves these things, you know what I'm saying? They're great. I'm not like Danny though, because I only got one drill press, Danny. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> and I don't even use it that often because I cut air holes with that. Right on, right on. <laughs> but I would tell you guys that this right here, this is my baby. This is my 1932 Revet Lathe and Grinder Company Lathe. Leather belt drive, wow. manufactured in 1932. 1932, man. Still just as precise as it was in 1932. These lathes right here were a jeweling lathe. They were basically known at the time in the 1930s as one of the nicest lathes you can buy. They were selling in the 1930s for like $3,000. Wow, yeah, that's, exactly, that's right? huge. And yeah. if you look really close, you can see these little hash marks along here. Those are from a master filer who hand filed the bed of this machine wow. to make it perfectly square and perfectly straight. So this guy right here, that's uh, insane. It, it's just so fun to use. 1932, dude, 1932. almost 100 years old, bro. Exactly. And and it's just as precise and works just as good as yeah. That's what back they, then. That's what they say. You know, <laughs> Morgan was telling us of this thing he just got 
I don't know, another tool. Sorry, guys. I know. I said. <laughs> bandsaw. It's a bandsaw. A lathe is, is so invaluable in a shop just for making parts round. Okay. Right? I don't really need an end mill so much. It would be nice to have one, but that's a nicety. This is a necessity. Okay. Right? You make bushes. I like that. Nicety, necessity. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Some little old man owned it, and then a friend sold it to me for $150. Wow. I've never seen another one on eBay. Insane. <laughs> Insane, dude. This is like collector stuff, it, dude. It, exactly, Dang. right? And then uh, nothing too special over here, you know, standard bandsaw. I got rid of the chop saw. I got away from chop saws because they are so messy. Okay. These are more precise, even though it's the cheapest one. They make it harder freight. But this right here for the fab shop. Of course. This is my Octo Bender, right? JD Squared oh. Model 3, standard stuff. The way that I have this set up as forward and reverse uh, full hydraulics, which means this thing can bend 250 wall tubing and it doesn't even change the sound of the motor. Wow. You know, and then of course the notcher setup that you have. I just hang it on here, but this goes on the table. Quick clamps on, ready to rock and roll. You Hell know? yeah. Get it on. Very this cool. This right? just Harbor Freight sheet metal brakes. Right of course, on. the Mittler Brothers right here though. Having a bead roller, also invaluable in a shop. Even though I rarely use it, when I do need it, it's there. Hell yeah, man. Well, well thanks for taking Welcome us to on the that. Monkey Cave, by the way. There it is, dude. <laughs> Let me show you the After Hours F-150 out here. I know this truck from the clean desert cleanup that we just had. You were out there with your family in this thing. Absolutely. So this thing can seat four people for just being the extra cab. So I got two seats in the back. Then of course a couple front seats in here. Now nice. keep in mind the front seats are like 12 years old. Okay. Right? And he originally ordered them in silver to match the silver of the truck, but they're just old and dingy now. Yeah. You know, we'll have to talk well, to some of our friends at PRP or one of those places. Yeah, let's you know? get these guys <laughs> dialed in, man. Heck yeah. The fun thing about this truck is it has the original motors that control the seats in here. No way. Yeah, so like the, the motor's getting a little tired, but but they work. But they work. Seat goes up and down. Oh, that's wonderful. Instantly luxury pre renter That's what that's, this that's thing is. That's what that becomes, you know, yeah. you know, like <laughs> my buddy built the roll cage and he was able to fit it so tight that we were able to get the original plastics back on the A-pillars right here. We're pretty proud of that. That's rad. What he did is he listened to what I had to say and he executed it pretty good, you know? Hence the teaching. Exactly. I guess I'm pretty good at that. Right on, We're able dude. to get a lot of the factory plastics and carpet and all of that stuff back in this truck. Everything fits nice and tight. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand getting that tight fit isn't something that happens very often, right? <laughs> but, but, but for it to be like this and to have these handles still incorporated is, is actually pretty cool, man. Yeah, I like pretty that. Cool, yeah. right? Well, there it is, guys. There's the cage. And it's the after hours F-150 because you said your buddy's a construction guy and he built He's this literally after hours, right? Yeah. He's been equipment operating this. He started building this truck. He bought it in 2003, almost new. It looked like this era of truck. And at that time, you know what was popular, right? The Black Diamond. The Black Diamond. The Black Diamond yes, was what sir. everybody wanted. So that's what the original kind of look of this truck was going for. Yes. Um, and now over 20 years. so. He dropped it off at our old friend Woody's house. Woody originally set up the links okay. and all that. Woody is the old school Yukaipa kind of guru, right? He was I, I, so I've heard about Woody. It's so cool, again, how these guys are all like connected out here, dude. <laughs> and so much cool stuff comes from out here. But Woody helped build the chassis of the new uh, the Scott Ratto truck. I th yeah, Woody started that truck. I think he truck started or, that truck. Yeah. Structurally made it sound yeah, yeah. as hell, right? Yeah, Woody's badass. He originally set this truck up. My buddy lost his job. Okay. So he had to pull his truck out. So he pulled this thing home to his garage. Okay. Completely cut in half. And all that was on it was the Lynx. Pretty much a new truck. Yeah, pretty much like ready yeah. to be built into a pre-runner. But yeah. times got tough. 
Yeah. So this truck ended up, he finished it himself. Mm -hmm. From here down, he did just the coilovers. We just did the bypasses this week. So the last time we filmed this thing, it was just coilovers, right? It was just coilovers just got the, the bypasses. Yeah, yeah. And how was that? Like all these years just on coilovers and now bypasses. What, what does he think? He put the keystone in place on this truck and he hasn't even gotten to drive it yet. No way. No, we haven't driven it like this yet. Wow. So we're anxious to get to oh, the desert I'm, right I'm now. I'm sure, like, man. Let's go. So the fuel cell disintegrated recently. So we just put this fuel cell in here the other day. Yeah. Uh, I basically just burned it up real quick. It's replacing an old jazz. Yeah, jazz. yeah, yeah, yeah. The plastic hard shell inside. I think it's just so cool that you're just able to just be like, ah, oh, you know what it broke? I'm just gonna build a new one real quick. Like <laughs> most guys are like, all right, let me order this up and let me wait for six months. Doing it right, you got the fuel cell, but you're gonna have your two spares behind the axle. Mm -hmm. A lot of the weights back there, she's gonna dance, man. Giant motorsports links. Woody did the truss on all of this, did a beautiful job. <laughs> This rear end is originally out of one of those FX4 Fords or whatever. They were okay. like the pre-runners before the Raptors. So it's got the big ring gear in it. Okay. All of that stuff. It's like a 10-inch or something? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, fairly standard stuff. Original drive shaft. Original U-joint. What? Original everything in here. No Woody did way. such a good job. Let Fender me tell you crap. guys. <laughs> this truck, I have the crew cab, but these things are notorious for destroying drive shafts, right? Exactly. I mean, right? I mean, that's like one of the first things that's like, oh cool, I just got some leaf springs on my truck. This thing's been linked for like 10 years and it still has the original drive shaft. <laughs> that's just... <laughs> I'm sorry, that, I'm, that's it, we're done. That's the end of the episode. Exactly. I'm, I'm, we're all impressed. I know I'm nerding out on this, but oh, this is cool really, truck. really cool. It is a cool truck. So take us through this. So he basically built the rest of the back half, right? He built the rest of the, <laughs> the back half here, all of this. Uh, I mean, 10 years ago, I finished up the bumper. Okay. But the tube work right here, he did himself. And he did such a great job that we didn't really have to mess with anything. It's just added on. Yeah. And we didn't have to cut and replace any of these components. I mean, look at all this up travel, man. Yeah, Holy this thing, smokes. you know, it, I can't wait. Recently, we bought these shocks. These are eight tube bypasses. Oof. You know, and look how thick this shock shaft is. I don't even know what to do with that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So yeah, these are the race series so right is, here. Yeah, this Heck is gonna yeah. change the game for this truck. We've waited for 20 years for it to be like it is right now. This we just did, uh, this H&M front, this year. Oh, okay. This truck originally had the CST kit on it with some 2.0 bump stops. Ooh, so she's getting fancy. Oh, she, this she, thing is getting th real this is fancy. A, this is what the kids call a glow up. <laughs> um, I saw crazy, this H&M kit on the internet and I told my friend, sell your soul to the devil and go buy that kit, man. You're not going to see him anymore. And so, he did. We got a great deal on it for about two grand. This kit is very special. Very right. special. How much is an H&M kit now? Like eight, 10 grand? You can't buy one because they're not even in business, I don't think. Oh, really? Yeah, H &M's I haven't not making heard them, anything huh? from H&M in months. I don't know yeah, what they were originally back in the day, but I know last I checked, they were close to eight to 10 grand, eight, maybe 10 even grand? more. Yeah, it sounds about right. I have this same kit on the daily too. The setup here, we got the 2.5, what is this, a uh, uh, 12 inch? I think they're a 14 inch stroke. He wanted to go with the taller 14? shock okay. that everybody else normally runs a 12. Okay. And we went with a 14 to gain. Okay. Because because we were already on the pivots. I haven't even really measured it. We just put it together and I just make sure everything works. I don't care yeah. about the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, and I, I mean, originally these pull like what, about 18 inches? Something Smart. like that. And with a big 2.5 bump stop, this thing's a beast. Oh, dude, you know? I, I can only imagine. It's hard to actually push all the way through that bump stop. I'm more afraid to break the wheel off the hub. <laughs> Dang, that's wild. You know? Heck yeah, man. My buddy did all this tube work. He just listened to what I had to say. Okay. And where most people make the biggest mistakes is right there. What's Underneath that? the dash, inside the truck, tying in these tubes. Okay. And these tubes. And my friend basically gutted out the interior of this truck and he did such a wonderful job right in there. I don't think that we'll ever have to worry about braking right there. And that's important because that's the worst place to break a tube or okay. you know, you'll break your truck off, right? Right, right, right. Um, it's a place you want to <laughs> deal with once. Exactly. Never go back you know? to it. Just have that reliability factor. Yeah, yeah. And cool. so he made everything remote mount, you know, like even the hood stays up without the fender on. Awesome. You can take the bumper off of this truck. You can take the grill off of this truck. You can walk right in and service the motor because we moved the radiator to the back. I don't know if you saw that back there. And I did that for him about 10 years ago. So okay. nowadays I would line the tubes up a little cleaner and there's definitely some things I would do a little nicer nowadays. I was right. still learning back then, but to have it hold together for 10 years and not really be a problem, and, I'm and, okay with that, you know? <laughs> and he goes pretty hard on this thing. He drives this thing. I drive it like 80% of what he drives it. He's a madman. You might have seen him out in Glamis over Thanksgiving. I okay. think he was out there. And then what motor's in this thing? So this is the 5.4 Triton, okay. right? Okay. But he's got a bigger throttle body on it and okay. underdrive pulleys. 
Okay, Other cool. than that, it's pretty much stock. The motor, I think, has less than 100,000 on it. He did have it rebuilt about 10 years ago or so. And it's funny because he owns a Raptor. So like when the Raptor breaks down, he drives this daily. When this breaks down, he drives the Raptor daily, <laughs> all that, rad. you know, that's back rad. and forth. <laughs> so it almost wasn't here because he's got to work on his Raptor. Dang. <laughs> you know? I'm really loving how you guys even did like the mounting on this bump stop. Like it just looks so cool. Thank you. Everything looks we're, amazing. We're you guys pretty are... proud of the execution on this. Heck yeah. Ideally, what's next for this truck? Well, what's next for this is probably <laughs> start cleaning up the interior. He's thinking about going with a different dash and things like that. That dash okay. is the original and it's cracked and breaking and falling apart after, you know. Shaking the shit out, out of it yeah, for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. uh, we definitely want to get the air conditioning hooked up. Okay. Uh, things like that. And then it, it's really to the nice elements inside the wrap yeah. and the tubes and, and turning it in from, from this old beater into the luxury pre-runner. Great, man. And I Excellent. think we're gonna keep the original body lines on this truck. Oh, I love get it. Some paint. What glass is this? Do you guys know? Uh, is it like Hanneman? Uh, Glassworks, maybe. Glassworks huh? is who I think it is. Okay. Yeah, it might be some Glassworks. You know what I like? These cup holders are here too. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. The funniest thing is on Desert Rangers, all those years ago, people were putting cup holders in their bedsides. No big deal. Like 15 years ago. That, that's a. That's now a... every time we go to the desert, people are blown away that we got cup holders in there. Yeah, dude, <laughs> in it's the like the bedside of the truck. That everybody misses everything else, and they're like, "Oh my is god, is that a I cup can't holder? Got cup holders in this thing." Well, this is the best <laughs> damn cup holder I've ever seen right here. They're dope, huh? <laughs> Heck yeah! You guys got your coolers back here. You got the fire extinguisher, which is funny, necessary. Funny story right? about fire extinguishers, everybody. Everybody, safety, 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 right? So my neighbor, this truck was parked at his house. His neighbor's kitchen caught on fire. What? They had a kitchen fire in their house. No way. He was able to run out here and grab both the fire extinguishers off his truck, go in there and save those people's house from burning down. Straight up <laughs> pre-runner fireman right here. <laughs> exactly, right? Dang. So always have fire extinguishers. Now I keep them everywhere. I have them all over the shop. I have them in my trucks. This guy has like a roots cool story about everything. It's <laughs> awesome. Thanks for taking us through this thing. Um, Absolutely. I'm excited to see this thing run. I'm really pumped for you guys. And, and you know, it, it kind of shows the dedication of like building a truck. He's had this thing for a while and he's continuously like building on it, building on it. So when you see this guy out, you know, ripping some whoops, you'd be like, oh, that guy's a freaking millionaire. Or, oh, this and that. It's like, no, dude, the struggle is real with everybody. The struggle is especially real. Especially with these trucks. Like we always say, they're basically hot rods that we just beat the crap out of. <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> that something, is something's it. wrong with these us. These are our version of hot rods. Yeah. Right? So if you see him, his name is Dwayne. In the desert, stop him. Say hi, tell him about his truck, man. And, and tell him how cool his cup holders are. The cup holders in the pits. Most importantly. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Hey, Jeff, thank you again, man, for inviting thank us Thank you guys out. for coming out. I really appreciate it. Jeff has a school out here in Banning. Check it out. We'll put some info right there in the description. Welders Workshop. Welders Workshop out here, uh, Banning, Beaumont, where the 60 and the 10 freeway meet out here in Southern California. If you guys are interested in learning how to do some of that stuff, you guys can hit Jeff up that way. Thanks for sharing all these projects with us, man. If you guys have any questions about some of the tools that he uses, in the shop you guys could probably hit them up here also in the comments and if you guys know somebody building an f-150 that you know feels like it's far away send them this man this will pump them up there's a lot send of cool this stuff video. on this thank you guys so much for watching we appreciate you guys share like subscribe and all that good stuff and we will see you guys later